Good morning, everybody. Today, I want to uh, walk you through the installation of an intake manifold on the big block Chrysler. This particular engine is a 383. It's for a, a 68 Roadrunner. I got a request from a couple of people about uh, some shorter videos having to do with some of the other things like valve adjustment and valve installation or uh, va rocker, rocker arm installation and stuff like rocker arm installation. Uh, and make sure the valve adjustment is right on a big block Chrysler. So uh, here we go. I'm, uh, one of the things that I'm going to try to do this year is when people make suggestions for videos, I'm going to try to like do a segment on that. So I've got my buddy Charlie's Roadrunner engine here that we just built and we're gonna put the intake manifold on. All right, so on the, the, the big block Chrysler, you guys, first of all, this is a non-adjustable valve train. If you're if you're sticking with the, the factory rocker arm assembly, which we are here, and this, these are phenomenal engines. The, one of the fundamental differences between a 383 and a 440 is the 383 has a shorter deck height, and it actually takes a different intake. The heads are a little closer together. But um, other than that, I mean, it, the nice thing about the 383 is it's a big block that thinks it's a small block. It's got a shorter stroke. A much shorter stroke but it's also got a big bore so it's a big bore short stroke motor which is very conducive to uh, making really good power so what we did on this engine is we uh, we did not go with a roller cam as you can see so he's gonna have to do a break-in budget constraints didn't let him do that I really wanted him to go with a roller but uh, it is what it is so we got a, a brand new flat tap at cam in there the camshaft is a pretty aggressive cam it's not it's not a race cam or anything but it's got about 236 degrees of duration at 50 236 242 or something like that 50 lift which is really you don't want to go any higher than that with a stock heads now these are a pretty good casting these heads work pretty good so we got one of the better heads on this thing but the valve adjustment itself once you the the bolt the rocker arms just bolt down and you torque them down one of the things you need to watch out for is your push rod length now on these you just want to make sure once you bolt your rocker down that you're in the plunger. You don't have any slop here and you're actually in the plunger. Sometimes when you get cylinder heads, the valve stem heights won't be right because of whoever worked on or did the valve job. We set the valve stem heights when we did the valve job at the factory height. And you can see we got one broken bolt here. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm gonna have, once I get everything on, I'm gonna tape everything up and do surgery on that, right? We'll make sure nothing gets in because that that's that's one that we missed so yeah so just make sure that the rockers are bolted down and you are in the travel of your plunger when your valve is closed and everything will be good now the Chrysler big blocks have a valley pan they actually have a dry intake which is a big advantage you don't get all that coolant running through the intake just absorbing all the heat and transferring it to the air so it keeps the air pretty cool that's one of the advantages of this motor a lot of the later model engines like the LS1 and a lot of the 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 modern Hemi and some of those engines, they all have plastic intakes that are dry. They've gotten the cooling system, the coolant and the heat away from the intake. Chrysler's been doing that forever with their big blocks. So it's a very good design. It's also a skirted block. These, these things, this motor here is gonna be a beast. Even though we've got stock rockers on it, the way that we built it, it's gonna be very potent for his uh, 68 Roadrunner. Now the valley pan, this is a Felpro valley pan. The valley pan, is actually becomes the intake manifold gaskets here. It's a steel gasket. You want to get this valley pan on first of all before you set your intake. So there's a couple of bars that go down on the end here and I always put a couple of studs in it. These are just temporary to help locate the intake when we put it on. So, but these bars that go on the end of the engine here, I'll show you those in a second. You gotta make sure that you seal this area up. You don't want this valley pan leaking. The nice thing about the Felpro valley pan is it actually comes with a tube of RTV that they recommend to use with it. So what we wanna do is we just wanna take and open this up and we wanna seal these ends here. So we're just gonna put decent bead right here, right along that edge. You wanna make sure this is sealed. And also the intake manifold can, can leak here right so we want to make sure we come up here and seal this right we got a little paint drip there but that's not going to hurt anything silicone will cover that nicely so we're going to go in all four corners we're going to do this guys we want to seal this valley pan right where the oil could potentially leak out of the engine we don't want any leaks here now you don't need to seal 
the intake runners. In fact, I recommend that you don't do that because what happens is that silicone, as it, it, it can kind of, if it gets oil contaminated or it can kind of break down and it gets sucked into the intake port, right? There's a lot of, there's a lot of force pulling air and fuel in there. So we want to keep the silicone away from the intake ports if possible. Now that you've got that done, you can go ahead and lay your valley pan and you want to make sure you have your bolts ready here. So these are the hold down bars that are going to go in the front and the back here. So we're just going to take our valley pan. Like I said, I always put a couple of locating studs in here just to make sure I get this thing to help hold it in place. And we are going to just put the valley pan down on there. Now you're going to have to, the valley pan has to be forced down and actually the heads where it is located are actually going to cause the valley pan right to be wedged in there so we're going to have to wedge this down but we're going to use our front and our back retainers on here to hold this thing down so that we can get our intake on there all right guys so i also what i do these are quarter 20 bolts here but i like to put these studs in because they don't really interfere with the intake and it actually helps to locate the pan where it needs to be and so once i get those studs in then i put my rails on I'm just going to put the rails across here and then we'll go ahead and put our, go ahead and put our quarter 20 nuts on here and we're going to torque this. Alright, so then we're just going to put the nuts on there and snug them down. Now be careful when you're tightening these, the torque on these is only about 20 foot pounds. Um, I don't really need to use my torque wrench to get this. I've been doing this so long, but if you're not sure how tight these need to be, uh, just get your torque wrench, 20 foot pounds. Do not over tighten these. That's one thing you don't want to do because you'll snap them off. So if you can't do this by feel because you have enough experience, use a torque wrench. All right, so we're just going to snug those up. Okay, go back and give them a little once over here. A little bit of torque on these. All right, so now, once you get the ends on with your, your sealer in there, then we can go ahead and lay the intake on here. Um, and again, it's the steel gasket here. And I've got these locating studs here just for, just for the purposes of locating the intake on here and then we'll get our we'll, we'll get our bolts in it so this engine we're putting on an edelbrock uh 383 performer this was an intake it's in good shape but it was uh, on the engine before so we painted it black and highlighted the the edelbrock with red because we cleaned it up in the vat and the aluminum didn't look very good so he just wanted to paint it black so i think it looks pretty good um so again, this is a dry intake. There is no water going through the Mopar intake, which is good. Keeps the heat away from that air. So just go ahead and you can lay your intake on there. And then you're gonna, we're gonna line up the, the bolts here. And we're just gonna get our bolts in it and we're gonna torque it down. I turned the camera off and I went ahead and put all the fasteners. Now we're, I took the two studs that I had and I used them here in the back because they work perfectly fine. But remember, one of the things that's really important with an intake manifold that's made out of aluminum is you got to make sure you put flat washers on here. If you notice, I've got flat washers under all of these bolts here if you take a look at them. The bolts will tear up that aluminum. So that's, that's the original bolt that came out of the manifold. We didn't replace them because they were in good shape, but you'll notice we got a, a really nice hefty flat washer on there. And so you, Put the bolts in, get them all started, and make sure that they all have flat washers. And then we can torque our intake manifold to specs in sequence. Now the, the torque sequence is really critical on this. All right, so now um, I've got all the bolts in, guys, with the, the washers, the flat washers under them, and I've got them all hand tight. Very, very critical here. You need to follow the torque sequence that the manufacturer gives. This is directly from Edelbrock. And if you look in the OEM, book it also says the same thing so the torque sequence on the big block chrysler basically starts in the middle so we're going to be up here one two and then we cross over 
um, this way three four and then we're going to back off to five and six on the end straight across and then the last two are going to be on so basically we're going in a a bit of a crisscross pattern from the center out and that's always what you want to do with any kind of an intake component uh intake manifold because you want to pull it down evenly i see guys i watched a video the other day guys putting one of these on and he's using an air gun to to zip these down no pattern he's just going starting at one end and working your way down and i'm just thinking my goodness that intake is doomed so uh don't ever use an impact to put this on you would think that that would be common sense but nowadays you never know so that <clears throat> the torque value on the chrysler intake is 40 foot pounds but we want to do that in two steps so I'm gonna go in the, the pattern to 25 first and then I'm gonna cinch it down to 40 so we're gonna start here this is number one okay we're gonna go straight across to our number two and then of course we're gonna crisscross to the other side this is my number three bolt here Back over here for four, four, five is up here, five, six, and then we go diagonally up to the front. This will be number seven, and then back down to the other side for eight, eight. Now we're going to do that again. That was our first step. We're going to take and set our torque wrench to the final torque, which is 40 foot-pounds. And we're going to do that sequence again. I won't do it on camera because it's pretty obvious. But uh, that's basically intake manifold uh, installation on a big block Chrysler. All right, guys. So that's it. Thanks for watching. That's basically intake manifold installation on a 383 Chrysler big block. And that's very similar for any big block 440, 413, whatever you're working on. I appreciate you watching, and if you have any questions or comments, make sure you ask them below, and I will talk to you very soon, I promise.